Hello everybody and welcome to PlayStation's Crossbar Show, your home of everything FIFA and football related. Whether it's FIFA Ultimate Team, eSports or you're just a huge footballing fan, we will have you covered over the duration of today's show. My name is Brandon Smith and joining me as always is Richard Buckley for the first one of 2021. Happy New Year my friend, how are you? And um, another packed show today. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, very happy to be here once again, Brandon. Happy New Year to yourself and all the viewers of Crossbar on the PlayStation's channels. I'm doing great, to be honest. A um, little bit of context behind the camera. Today is a Monday morning. I've just finished playing Weekend League and we got Elite again. So we're back in the Elite Club. Um, I did it with a full untradeable team as well. So I'm, I'm feeling very, very happy. And I know a little birdie told me you've, you've moved out of the Goal 2 Club. As well, you moved out of the Gold 2 gang, you've joined the Gold 1. Um, next step to Elite, Brandon. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sort of confirm or deny any of those rumours as of yet. But great to see you in a lovely flowery shirt. As we said, first show of Crossbar for 2021. Hopefully another packed year for PlayStation with the Open Series and everything that's happening in and around the world of FIFA and esports. There's a lot to talk about today, so let's jump straight into the news to dissect everything that's been happening over the recent weeks in the world of FIFA. As always, Richard, I sound like I'm repeating myself, but there is so much to talk about in today's news section. We're going to kick it off with some esports first and foremost, Richard. We have been thrown straight back into that commentary box, the virtual commentary box, we may as well call it, because there's been so much FIFA, isn't there? There's been tournaments taking place all over the world, of course, from the comfort of everybody's own home. We were commentating on a tournament just a couple of days ago, and we actually saw Nicholas back on the big stage in South America after a penalty shootout, Richard, as we're going to see now on screen, this man has ice in his veins and he's back for FIFA 21. Yeah, the reason they're calling the ice man is Rude Hullet slotted that penalty home to send Nicholas back into the winner's column. A decent amount of prize money as well in South America. Um, on the, the other side of the bracket, back-to-back -back champion PH Zinn was victorious as well. So, really competitive region is South America right now. But we are truly in the midst of the FIFA esports scene. It's not only been South America getting in on the action, Brandon, because there's been tournaments everywhere right now across the globe. And I think you've got to just sort of look at the, the real competitiveness that is still being had in such a unprecedented year for FIFA. Um, with it all being remote online, we didn't know how the season was going to go. But I think you've got to give props to everybody behind the scenes that are running these events because it is really top, top work from the competitors and also the um, people behind the scenes as well. Yeah, it's absolutely remarkable, Richard, as we said. But there's tournaments taking place all over the world, quite literally. This is a tournament from East Asia that also took place on the same weekend as South America. Uh, SCJ7 picking up his result there in his first ever major win. Some serious global series points in his back pocket. But it wasn't just those two regions. There was North America that were also uh, in action too, Richard. A familiar name over here on the PlayStation. Joxan, we gave you a couple of yeah. teasers to watch out for this man in 2021. And I mean, talking about FIFA 21, Richard, this man has hit the ground running once again. Consistency levels like no other from the Mexican. Yeah, if you look at the the North American region right now, Joxan is firmly on top. Not only has he done it in North America, but he's done it on the global stage as well. Club World Cup champion last year, FIFA 19, multiple events under his belt as well. Joxan, it wasn't just a flash in the pan in FIFA 19. He's won events in every single year since then. And I think this era of Joxan dominance for team complexity is going to continue. Yeah, huge congratulations there. It's not just all of these qualifiers taking place, as we said, you know, Oceania, uh, Europe, uh, South America, the list goes on so many tournaments taking place in the Global Series, a safer FIFA 21 Global Series, of course, around uh, the pandemic. But it's not just these qualifiers taking place. There's virtual leagues. There will be soon E-Premier Leagues, Virtual Bundesliga, but a league that's already concluded one of the biggest virtual leagues 
the Eredivisie Edivisie took place, Richard. We got to commentate on this. And surprise, surprise, Ajax back to the forefront and back with some silverware in their, uh, you should say, their trophy cabinet for the FIFA 21 year. Yeah, we had the opportunity to commentate this event from home. You see what it means to Ajax and also their opponents, uh, Vitesse, here in this final. It was a dramatic final. It went down to the final game and really Danny clutched it up in the end for Team Ajax. Um, it felt weird watching the EWZ without any fans. We were there in 2020, um, just in the, the beginning of the year, when there were about 3,000 live spectators in the arena. And it was such an atmosphere. Watching this from home, I mean, you see the celebrations weren't halted at all. Everyone there with their masks on and, and really sort of enjoying the moment, I think we shall say, in the uh, bundled HQ with Team Ajax. Yeah, some serious money on the line there. 50,000 euros. Of course, Tajado was that PlayStation representative that teamed up with Danny this time. And also, you may have saw a couple of snippets there of Levy De Word, a player that's been involved in yeah. the PlayStation Open Series, a serious young talent uh, from the Netherlands. Of course, they'll have their season two around... I think about April, May time, so stay tuned for that. Another one of the virtual leagues. But, I mean, that's enough of FIFA Esports before we could talk about it all day long. There's been so much happening. I think it's time we move on to something else, Richard. And that is one of the biggest talking points at the moment, not in just the FIFA world, in the footballing world, Team of the Year. It's that one moment where you're either a football fan or just a FIFA fan. Which way do you go? Because Team of the Year is such a hard one to debate every single year, isn't it? Yeah, it, just giving you a little bit of context on Team of the Year, if you don't know what it is, these are the best FIFA Ultimate Team players that will be released in the yearly cycle, potentially up to the summer when Team of the Season does come out. These are the elite of the elite players. It's a very individual select amount of players, and you get to vote on your Team of the Year. This is my Team of the Year that I put forward in the community vote done by uh, EA. Neuer in goal, Davis, Ramos, Van Dijk and Trent Alexander-Arnold across the back. A midfield three of Bruno Fernandes, Heung-Min Son and also Kevin De Bruyne. And then the front three of Lewandowski, Ronaldo and Messi. Um, my justification for Son, I think he's been absolutely incredible since the restart, shall we say, um, of the Premier League since the summer. He has been, I believe, one of the best players, not only in the Premier League, but in the world. And I think... You look at the, the midfield options, it would just be a different midfielder. We've got to go back all the way to FIFA, uh, I think it was 16, when Frank Ribery got a Team of the Year for Titan as a midfielder. It was a left mid, usually you get CDMs or CAMs. I think just mixing it up with a left mid would certainly add some diversity into the Team of the Year. And I'm with Messi up top with Lewandowski and Ronaldo. Messi, I think he has to be in there. He's a staple of Team of the Year. And if he gets that centre forward, team of the year instead of a wide player he would be incredible yeah i mean is that technically a cheat code you found there richard putting a left winger into one of those midfield three left i thought mid, i was following the rules here it's you're technically right i mean this is my team of the year and i think we can both agree on the goalkeeper the back line i think you look across the, the years that Bayern munich had uh, you know, they won three major titles. Liverpool, great year for them. Sergio Ramos looking really good again, a captain leader uh, and a very, very good in-game item. Alfonso Davies, great year for me. Joshua Kimmich comes into the frame of things in my midfield because I thought I was I was sticking to centre midfielders here, Richard. I thought I was trying to play by the rules. Um, didn't know you could put a, a left winger into the uh, into the in that position now. So I'm a little bit disappointed on my pick. The only interesting pick is Sadio Mane in that team. Um, and again. It's one that's not been fully justified yet from from everyone I think who's, who's looked at. There people saying it's quite an honest team. For me, I just felt like Lee, you know, in, in the nicest way, Sadio Mane had a really big year with Liverpool in 2020. Um, yes, there's no Messi. Yes, there's no Neymar. Yes, there's no Mbappe. Robert Lewandowski. If Robert Lewandowski is not in your team of the year. I'm sorry. You've got to apologise to that man. He scored so many goals. Yes, he might not have all the pace in the world on FIFA, but. He's a goal machine. And then, of course, Cristiano Ronaldo leading the way up top. Of course, you guys let us know if you are watching this crossbar show who you want in your team of the year or what you agree with or don't uh, agree with with Martin and Richard's team. Um, because at the end of the day, that's the great thing about team of the year. We all get to have our own say, Richard, our own voice on things. Yeah, absolutely. And I think there's plenty of debates as well around team of the year. Um, and I'm just looking forward to seeing it get released now and who's going to be part of that 11 who's going to be making up the team of the year because 
Um, they're certainly going to spice up the game. I think that's one thing for certain. They're always the best players in FIFA, and they're going to be, once again, the best players in FIFA 21. Well, still on the topic of FIFA Ultimate Team, still, we teased in December, we'll talk about it now, the PlayStation Open Series is officially, is officially, Richard, going over to FIFA Ultimate Team. There will be the monthly finals taking place at the end of this month in January. Some serious money on the line, FIFA points and so much more. And if you are someone that wants to get involved in the Open Series or just FIFA Ultimate Team in general, me and Richard have put our heads together and we've chosen five players that we recommend you use on FIFA Ultimate Team. Richard, break these players down because they're all at different prices, they're all at different positions, but overall, they're very meta and they're very, very good on FIFA 21. Yeah, so just a quick synopsis of every single player here. You have got Mindy and Varane. Them two sort of come as a pair. Um, the best centre-back and left-back, if you're on a budget and you can't afford the, the big icons, we're talking Laurent Blanc, Marcel Desailly, or... Uh, Paolo Maldini, these two will do a job for you no matter what. They're used in qualifiers by pros in the FIFA Global Series, so you know that they're good enough to play in your team. On the right-hand side, we've got Kante and Rashford, two Premier League picks. It's three out of the five players are France. France, it's exactly the same as head-to-head, -head, are just a meta nation. Uh, Marcus Rashford is unbelievable in FIFA 21 Ultimate Team. Five-star skills, four-star week for a real sort of just a, an unbelievable foot item. And the closest thing you will actually get on a budget to Kylian Mbappe. Mbappe is higher in the price range. Rashford will do you as good of a job as Mbappe um, would for the price that you're paying for him. An absolute bargain in the middle. Neymar, he is, in my personal opinion, the best in-game foot item on FIFA 21 Ultimate Team. Absolute world-class in the final third. He's a magician on the ball. Five-star, five-star. He, he literally offers you everything you need from an attacking player. Yeah, he's so, so good. That's just five players that we recommend maybe you use in the Open Series. Of course, we're over to Ultimate Team now. And speaking of the PlayStation Open Series, I think it's time we jump into that to recap how we closed out 2020 on the PlayStation Open Series. <laughs> Well then, Richard, an unbelievable end to proceedings in 2020 with the Open Series in the end. It was our last official month of us broadcasting the head-to-head -head tournaments. Of course, they will still remain the head-to-head -head tournaments if you are a sort of club's player in terms of you like using your, your, your France or your Liverpool, your PSGs. But we will be commentating on Ultimate Team now in 2021. And again, it was a, it was a great way to end things, Richard, because as always... It never disappoints the Open Series. Well, I think two new winners this time round, both for North America and in Europe. And just great to see new faces. We're getting bigger and bigger, the Open Series, week by week, month by month. Yeah, once again, the Open Series, a bag of surprises, really, in uh, North America and in Europe. We saw some unbelievable games. We saw some great goals as well. And I think it just rounded off the year in perfect style really we're getting to see the eu december monthly final bracket here if you did miss it it was uh i did 98 who was victorious um a, a great performance from him beating sebastian bashk in the final one goal to nil um just look at some of the scores though this is what we're talking about six three three two four three there was goals flying in everywhere and a, a real sort of good way to round out and see in 2021 yeah, on top of that as well, as you said, you know, we saw North America go down. But the special thing about that European broadcast, Liverpool were one of the teams yeah. that everyone was seeming to use. I mean, it's normally France everybody uses, but this time round, uh, it was Liverpool. And Liverpool played very well. A lot of clutch goals, a lot of last minute big goals they did score, Richard. And, and it sort of opens up the question in North America in December, you know, were we going to see the same sort of style? We saw a couple of people use Liverpool, but it was always France. France were the, the meta, they are the meta in the Open Series, and uh, France came out, of course, winners again. Yeah, they did, and once again, just look at some of the results. 4-1, 4-1, uh, a very comfortable semi-final for Ronin Adrian. We thought he might have been the favourite going into the final, but four goals to three in yeah. the final. It was a final to remember for Kevin AC07. Another fantastic performance from all the competitors in the Open Series, and I think moving on to Ultimate Team, it's only going to get more competitive. We're going to see more verified, foot verified players coming into the fray. And I cannot wait to see what the end of the month does bring for FIFA 21. 
Yeah, make sure you've signed up if you haven't already. Compete.playstation.com. Loads of tournaments coming your way in 2021. An ultimate team or, of course, on head to head. If you missed the action, you may have saw the brackets. You're thinking, guys, can we see some goals? Well, take a look at this because this was the best of the goals that went in in the Open Series in December. There are so many to look at. Take a look. A goal to nil. He will be in action a little bit later off. Former champion. Here's a chance now. Back to go. We Ramirez with France. And just like that, rule square. Ben Yedder. As you said to David Macias, lovely bridge touch again. It's Kingsley Coman. What a ball that is. And an even better goal. I think we're wrong on FIFA 20 when we had the team of the year promo. Chance back to goal now for Mbappe. This needs to go and it will lovely scoop turn. And an instant reply that France needed in this one. Here comes Max now. Trying to find a way back into the lead here after responding just before half time. Mbappe acres of space. Oh, he's like Croquetta in his way. In and around the box to avoid that tackle. That is potentially, yeah, as you said, a groundbreaking fact. It's not what done yet, though. Taking to Coleman. Just a simple fact, he's had a huge upgrade on his last year's foot item. You can see him right there in use. Perfect timing. Left to right, fresh off the back of a penalty shootout. Here is Bobby Firmino kicking things off. Maybe oh. in the right way for Liverpool, he will. Oh, I'm... Chance. Oh. Tino and Adam! Oh, my days! Drops the shoulder, there's the Dutchman. Kingsley Coman, lovely bridge touch, Kingsley Coman, and that is game, set, and match. Then getting past Queenie, who knocked out David Machias, last month's champion. And there we have it, some of our favourite goals that went in in the Open Series to close out 2020. And Richard, we had the opportunity to choose some of those goals, and there was just so many uh, to pick from. It was hard to choose our top five, so to speak, uh, from each region. Yeah, it really was. I think we got a good mix of, of skill goals and also some absolute worldies being scored. But there were so many more that we could have chose uh, than the five selected. Uh, really top quality stuff from the Open Series once again. Yeah, unbelievable stuff. As we said, we will have those finals coming up at the end of this month in January over on FIFA Ultimate Team. You can catch me and Richard there commentating on all of the action. And fingers crossed we'll see some more of you popping up over the duration of 2021. But that's a wrap for the Open Series recap. Now it's time for my favourite part of the show where we all learn something new. It's time for Richard's Tips. Well then, Richard, what have you been working on for us today in today's Crossbar episode? It's normally gameplay related or something to help out a casual FIFA player. I've taken a couple of notes in the past. I'll hold my hands up and maybe that's why I hit gold one of recent times. But what are we talking about today? What is your tip of the day? Well, we've come on to Ultimate Team for the Open Series. And I want to give people a little bit of help on the menus this week. Uh, we're looking in the SBCs. It's quite a, an advanced tip this week for the casual. But I talk you through it. I talk you about Icon SBC grinding. I can't explain it any further. So watch the video, get your notepad out, take some tips, and hopefully you can be getting closer to some of the top tier icons in FIFA 21. We are moving on to Ultimate Team this week, and it's not going to be a gameplay tip, it's going to be a content tip. Okay, so you see the icon SBCs come out, you see a player such as Fabio Cannavaro, and you think, I really want Cannavaro, but maybe you don't have the coins to afford him. What I'm going to show you this week is how to grind up to a being able to afford Fabio Cannavaro, and the only thing you need is bronze packs and a lot of time so fabio cannavaro the segments that you need is just the standard three here an 82 an 84 an 86 an 86 and an 88 rated squad so quite an expensive team to complete him but from your weekend league rewards your coins your division rivals and your squad battle rewards every single week you'll have a decent amount of coins building up you want to put all your coins into bronze 400 coin packs so these packs right here the 400 coins you might be like why you get players back, you get consumables. You sell your consumables onto the market to get more coins. Your players, you put them into the bronze upgrade right here, okay? To get this, you submit, I believe it's 11, uh, 11 bronze players right there, any position. You'll get back two silver players. You put your silvers into this one right here. You get three gold common players. You get your three gold common players, you do 100 silver upgrades. You get 300 gold players. You put your gold players into the 82 to 88 plus upgrade. Over time, you'll start getting a lot of 82s, 83s, 84s, 85s. This pack, this um, SBC that you get, 
comes around now and again. So whenever this comes up on the SBC tab, make sure you rinse this 82 to 88 upgrade. Over time, you'll build up your club, you'll start to get a lot of 85s, 86s, and then over the next 20 days, you can grind out one of the best centre-backs on the game. And there we have it, another week of Richard's tips there. A simple method, Rich, but you know if you are patient enough and you have got the time to do so, you can go from bronze to silver to gold upgrades, and then slowly but surely you can, you can work your way to some serious packs or some serious players in the long run. Yeah, I think it's something that's overlooked by a lot of players. Um, a lot of people just play the game and then maybe get annoyed when they don't have the best players in-game. But with a tip like that, you've got a lot of time on your hands. You can certainly grind out uh, some of the top-tier icons and also SBCs available in the Squad Building Challenges tab. Yeah, fingers crossed you might be able to pack someone decent on your way as well. Who knows, you might even pack yourself an icon. But that wraps up another episode of Crossbar here on PlayStation's YouTube channel and socials. A massive thank you to everyone that's watched all the way through. We've spoken about so much today, Richard. And the best thing is, we're only getting started in 2021, aren't we? We've still got so much more to break down over the duration of this year. Yeah, absolutely. Plenty of more Ultimate Team news coming in the future. Everything from the FIFA Global Series, and we are very much truly at the heart of the PlayStation Open Series. Uh, I'm looking forward to, to getting involved, and everyone at home can get involved as well. Once again, compete.playstation.com to get signed up to the Open Series, and hopefully we can see you there on the next broadcast. Yeah, hopefully we will. If we don't see you in the next episode of Crossbar, hopefully we'll see you in those PlayStation monthly finals at the end of this month. Of course, I've been Brandon Smith. He's been Richard Buckley. A massive thank you once again for watching this episode of Crossbar. We've spoken about Ultimate Team. We've spoken about eSports. We've spoken about our team of the years. We can't wait to see that one get released. And of course, on top of that, we've spoken about the Open Series. Thank you so much for watching, as always. That is a wrap from us here at Crossbar. Until next time, we'll see you all very soon. Bye-bye. Station.